Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this guy right here. Bang the Dice Game, the old saloon. It's the first expansion for Bang the Dice Game, and uh, it's a modular expansion. It's got five different modules in there that you can mix and match and uh, use only one and use all five. It really doesn't matter, but uh, it's meant to enrich your experience playing Bang the Dice Game. So let's get down to the table and see if it worked. So this is what you're going to get in your copy of Bang the Dice Game Old Saloon Expansion. Uh, first of all, you're going to be getting eight new character cards, all with different special abilities and all that good stuff. Uh, you're also going to be getting this new ghost character card, which I'll explain in a little bit later, and you get the tokens that come along with him. You also get uh, this little module of an expansion called the Indian Chief's Arrow, and I'll explain what that does in a little bit more. You get uh, more uh, life tokens or health tokens there. You also get nine new um, roll cards, which uh, have special abilities on them. We'll go over that in just a few moments. You also get the Ghost Renegade roll card, which I'll explain in just a few moments. You also get some cards that explain what the new dice do. And while we're there, you also get two new dice that are slightly off color. These are kind of a tan color, while the uh, ones in the base game are white. Uh, so they differentiate. You get a, uh, a Coward die and a Loudmouth die. And uh, of course, we'll go over those in just a few minutes. Let's take a look at each of these. Now, the Old Saloon is a modular expansion, which means that it comes with a lot of different modules that you can add all together, or you can pick and choose which ones you add together as well. Now, other things that come in the expansion, like these guys right here, they're just extra life tokens. You can go ahead and add them into your um, uh, to your game with you know no harm, no foul. Then there are also character cards, the new ones. There are five of them, which have no mention of the other modules of the expansion at all. You can go ahead and add these into your base game. And uh, now these three are ones that actually reference other parts of the expansion. So we'll get those uh, in just a few moments. But here it says, if you roll an arrow, you may take the Indian Chief's arrow from another player. So instead of having to take an arrow from the middle of the board, you can take the Indian Chief's arrow uh, from another player, which can help you a little bit. Let me just go ahead and explain the Indian Chief arrow real quick. Uh, this is another module of the of the expansion. It comes as a token like this, and it's a yellow background instead of the other, um, I believe they're tan. And what this basically does is, is that it counts as two arrows, first of all, but whoever holds the chief's arrow, when all the other arrows have been divvied out, if they have the most arrows, then they don't take any damage from the arrows. They just turn all their arrows, arrows back in. But if, you're the, if you have this and you don't have the most, you take uh, damage as normal again with this counting as two. So it's kind of a push your luck mechanism where uh, if you take an arrow, you can take this guy, but realizing that the Apache kid can take it from you if he rolls arrows. So that's a, a, a neat little mechanism for the game. One of a easily added uh, modules for the expansion. So that's what Apache kid does. Then there is Jose Delgado and Tequila Joe. Now these guys, uh, use the two new dice that come in the game. One of them is the uh, Coward uh, die, which is this one that has the two heels on it. Uh, you can take an arrow from another one, a regular heel, um, and a one-shot. The Coward die, uh, Tequila Joe, can use the Coward die without replacing one of his base dice. So he, he gets to roll six altogether. So basically what these guys do is they can replace base dice uh, on your turn. Unless you're one of these two characters, then they're just added to your dice and you're rolling six altogether. Now, what do these things do? Well, first of all, the broken arrow means that you can uh, take somebody up uh, an arrow away from a, either yourself or somebody else. The dynamite, that's regular. If you roll three of these, your turn's over, you take one life point. Arrow, you have to take an arrow from the middle. A double heal, so you can he heal two hit points if this face comes up. 
and then a regular uh, doing one damage at one space away on that one. And then there's also another heal on this. So again, this is the coward die. You can heal a lot with this one. Then there is also Jose Delgado. He says you may use the loudmouth die without replacing a base die. You roll six equal. So instead of replacing one of your base dice, you can add this to if you're Jose Delgado. But what this is, the cool thing about this one is, as you can see, the difference between this is one damage at one space away. This is two damage because it has the two rings on it. This is two damage at one space away. And then he also has a two damage at two spaces away as well. So the loudmouth guy uh, will be able to do a lot of damage. In addition to that, there is a double Gatling gun on this one. So it counts as two Gatling uh, faces instead of just one. There's also a regular thing here uh, for dynamite and arrow, but then there is this one as well. This means that you actually take a damage if this face shows up. Now, in a game that has five players or more, you can use the Ghost module of the Old Saloon expansion. Now, what this happens is, is that the first player that dies, unless, of course, it's the Sheriff, which would indeed end the game, uh, that person, whoever dies first, becomes the Ghost. Now, on the Ghost's turn, what he can do is he can roll two base dice and he rolls them just like everybody else but will roll but only two so he has this and maybe he wants to keep that one and he wants to re-roll this all right so maybe he wants to keep that one he's got one more roll left all right so it's a dynamite that locks anyway all right so at the on his turn he can take this die and take the matching token and he can give that token to whoever he wants and on their turn, they have to lock one of the dice on that face for their first roll. Now, on their second roll, they can re-roll the die if they want to, but on their first roll, they have to lock it as this. So, if you happen to roll uh, a dynamite, you could actually give the dynamite thing and they have to lock one of their dice. Now, unless they have the character in the base game that allows you to re-roll uh, dynamites, then they would not be able to roll that die at all. They'd be only rolling five, uh, four dice. So that's pretty cool. Now, if you happen to roll two of the same, you can give this token and this token to somebody which means that they would have to take two of their base dice and lock their face in like that. So that's a pretty cool thing to do. So you can either really help or really hurt uh, somebody in the game. And usually, more often than not, the way I've seen it go is that whatever role they were in the game before they died, that's usually the people, the team that they help. Uh, on the uh, other side of death or something to that effect. Now, the thing here is, is that the first person that dies becomes the ghost. If that first person was the renegade, then they actually become either the ghost renegade, vice uh, ghost deputy, or the ghost outlaw. Now, what that means is that uh, depending on how many players are in the game, you're going, it's going to determine which side you join. And again, this is only if you were the renegade and you die first to become the ghost. Now, the final module of the expansion are the different roll cards that come. Now, the difference between these roll cards from the base game is that they all come with special abilities down on the bottom that on your turn, you can flip over your card. You don't have to, but if you choose to flip over your card, you can do a special activity, but you have revealed your role. You, you're telling everybody else who you are. Uh, for example, the sheriff here, this isn't that big of a change, but you get three extra additional life rather than just two. With the vice deputies though, they have some pretty interesting abilities here. This one says, if you reveal this card, uh, you can reveal this card after any die roll. So basically you're flipping over and you're, you're showing everybody else that you're a deputy. It says turn one die to show the side of your choice. So it doesn't matter if it's on your turn or on somebody else's turn, you can do that and affect somebody else's die roll. Then there are the outlaws. If this guy reveals his card, when another player is about to gain a life point, that player does not gain those life points. And again, these are of course 
uh, shouldn't have to be said, but these are one-time uses. So that's pretty cool. If the sheriff's about to uh, regain some life, flip it over, no way. You're not going to regain those life points. Then the two renegades down here it says, reveal this card at the end of your turn. Immediately take another turn. So the renegade can take two turns in a row. If he's barreling down on the sheriff and about to win the game, he can take this and, and uh, take another turn. Here it says, reveal this card when any player is about to be eliminated. That player stays in in the game with two life points and may discard all of his arrows. So um, that's kind of a weird thing. Maybe you could use this if the sheriff's about to die and you don't want him to die yet because you want to be the last person standing and you want to be the guy that takes out the sheriff. That would be helpful as well. So I think this is probably the most changing module in this expansion. So wow, with Bang the Dice Game, man, I already enjoyed the game. Uh, you, you guys know that. I really enjoy the game. I love playing it with a number of different kinds of groups of people. People. I love playing with youth group. I love playing with my family. I love playing with other gamers. It, it just fits neatly in all of those different uh, parts of my life and my gaming life. So I really enjoyed it. When I found out that this was coming out, ooh, this was interesting, but I was also kind of uh, maybe trepidatious would be the right word because, you know, I, I already liked the game. And when, a, when an expansion comes out, I'm either, ooh, can't wait. Or I'm like, oh, what did they try to change? What did they mess with my game? How did they mess with my game? So I was kind of on the fence. But after having played it, oh my goodness, I'm so glad that they came out with this expansion. It has so many things that they add to it that I had never even thought of. I mean, who would think of wanting to reveal yourself so that you can have some kind of special ability. I mean, the whole thing with Bang the Dice game is that you're supposed to stay hidden. Uh, and that was kind of the tension that the game had. I would have never thought of revealing myself. I know, I know that in the game, there's many times where you want to reveal yourself. Stop shooting me, Sheriff. I'm your deputy. You know, that kind of thing. But uh, that was just a really cool addition. The ghost is a really cool thing that... Uh, answers the player elimination aspect of it because honestly that's one of the main gripes that I get about this game. Some of the people that don't like playing this game don't like it because they're afraid they're going to get knocked out quick and they're just going to sit there where everybody else is having fun. So at least that first person that gets knocked out, the one that usually has to wait the longest, now isn't. They just become another side character, so to speak, that can still influence the game, still help their side, and so forth and so on. So that was a really cool addition. The Indian Chief... Uh, uh, arrow. That was cool too, because that introduces a little bit of a push your luck mechanism. Really enjoyed that a lot. Uh, I also liked the two new dice that came with the game, the loud mouth and the coward die. Uh, the coward meaning the one you would probably use if you need to heal a little bit more. Um, I, there's just so many cool things. The new characters are very cool. The ones that interact with the different modules and the new ones that are just simply new characters with new abilities. This is what an expansion is supposed to be, in my opinion, because it takes the game, leaves its core mechanics there, leaves how you play the game alone, and does all of that, but then gives you another tier of playability. And that's what I really enjoyed about this. It's very easy to extract the expansion from the base game so that if you wanna play just the base game, you can, but at the same time, there's so, the, the, the rules that are here are so simple and so easy to pick up. Even I think, I think, could be wrong, but I think even first time players of this game would be able to grasp these new rules very easily. So there's that. I think this was, I mean, two six shooters way up for beyond this one. I love this expansion. If you have Bane the Dice game and you enjoy playing it, you need to go out and get this one ASAP. See you on the flip side.